you're confused and you're mixed up. You can't find God with a double mind. The Bible says to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. It isn't God's will that we be grumblesome. It's not God's will that we have anything to grumble about. If you had to eat crackers and water for the next seven days, it wouldn't hurt us at all. We wouldn't have any right to grumble. God's fed America. I was preaching the other night about talking Thursday night. We fail sometimes in the little things to to thank him and count our blessings. He said, what's used to thank God for the beans? I'm tired of beans. Yeah, but I wonder how many, I wonder how many beans it took to feed America today. I wonder if the chassis system has a, has a train or a track that could haul the food it took to feed the world today. And he holds it all in his hands. And the Bible says he upholds it all by his word. Who be in the brightness of his glory. The express image of his person. Upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And he's there brother. And he cares. As long as you feel like he doesn't care. As long as you back in that shell of inferior feelings self-pity self-righteousness you'll never be able to receive from God but it's when you attain that spirit and mind that I've been preaching so much about across country that mind that intercedes into that spirit world the mind of Jesus Christ that mind that gives you authority and power and ability far and beyond your expectations as a human being and then after a while it lets you know that it's not the flesh and it's not so much what you feel in the flesh that counts. It's what the Word of God says you are. It's speaking a miracle and believing it to happen. Say amen somebody. And it's not God's will to turn you away. When you come into the throne room of a living God, you're guaranteed in the name of Jesus. Listen to me while I'm getting ready to preach. When you come into the throne room of God, you're guaranteed that when you speak the name of Jesus, you're guaranteed an audience with God. You'll not be turned back at the door. I saw people leaving the rodeo over here a few minutes ago because they didn't have tickets. Thank God I got my ticket and I could ride. Hallelujah. And he, is, he has guaranteed his word that when you call minute, the Bible even speaks one place and says, before you call, I'll answer. He's not going to fail you. Has he ever let you down? Has he ever failed his people? My God can do anything. He can open blinded eyes. He can unstop deaf ears. He can heal the cripple. He can drop a cancer. But he can't fail. And he can't lie. Glory to God, I feel him all over me. He can do anything, but he can't fail you. And he can't lie to you. And he can't let you down. If you acknowledge him in your ways, he's going to raise you up. He's going to give you power. He's going to give you grace. He's going to give you love. He's going to give you strength. If you believe in somebody, raise your hands and praise the Lord for his power. Because he promised. God just changed my text. If you have your Bibles, turn to the first chapter of James. I got so many text marks in here. I never will get it all preached. When I think I've about got it all preached, I find something else to preach. Oh, Lord, where do you want me to start? Chapter 1, we'll begin with verse 5, and we'll go right down to verse 8, and I want you to listen to me. 
This is God speaking. Somebody said, I wish God would speak to me. He's getting ready to. So, but I mean, I won't even speak in thunder. No, you don't. It'd scare you to death. He spoke to me once. He spoke to me in thunder once, and I was in a cave in a dream, and he spoke to me, and it shook the ground that I was praying on. Like it scared me to death. I heard the voice of God. I won't, I'll hear it again. In fact, I'll hear it many times. And I mean audibly I'll hear it. But I don't mind to tell you when you do hear it, you can't hardly move your eyelashes. He's a great king, mister. He's a mighty God. Woo! I feed him all over. Raise your hands toward heaven and praise God for his power. Let's start with verse 2 and we'll go down to verse 8. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Now this is completely different to what I was going to preach. I was going to preach from the 5th chapter of Galatians, but God's changed right here in the last 3 or 4 minutes. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Oh, God, don't we need patience? Somebody said, I'd do anything to have patience. Well, that's, that's what you're getting because you're going through some tribulation. You say, well, I don't want the tribulation. Well, you can't have patience you go through tribulation. <laughs> but that's not my text. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire. Woo! Wanting nothing. <laughs> Woo -hoo, I'm getting ready to kick a devil in the teeth. Wanting nothing. God wants you in a place that you don't want nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Some of you read every book in the, in the bookstore trying to learn about God. Some of you will read my writings. Trying to learn about God, and no doubt it's good. But you only learn about God when you ask of Him. In faith believing on your knees, then you learn about God. Say amen, somebody. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. And upbraideth not. And it shall be given him. Some of us got the attitude, now this ain't my text. Some of us have the attitude, I'll ask him, it won't do no good. And that's right, it sure won't. You ask amiss. Ask unbelievable. Amen. Now what's this? But listen to what the Word says here. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. Glory to God! Some of you preachers help me. If he comes back in your corner, you kick him back out here I can get to him. Because I'm going to give the devil a fit tonight. In Jesus' name. There's some of you come in here heavy, burdened, feel like you've lost your best friend, feel like you're down, feel like you're oppressed and can't get up and can't go. You're just completely just ready to quit. And we're getting ready. I'm getting ready to get in the ring for you. And then after I get in the ring, I'm going to knock him around two or three rounds, and then I'm going to let you in there. And then you're going to find out there's one in your corner that's going to help you. Praise God. Jesus wants to help you. Say amen, somebody. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering.
For he that wavereth, now listen to me, Lord, I, I know that some of us are riding this boat. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. He said, that's me, Brother West. There is a remedy. There is a solution. There is a way. And it's not so bad to get in a fix every now and then and find yourself tossed to and fro, and it's not so bad every now and then to get in a battle, but what's so sinful and wrong about something is to completely have your life surrounded by wavering thoughts and completely being engulfed with doubt and fear and living a life that's not pleasing to God, always talking unbelief, always talking about sickness, always talking about being financially in poverty. Honey, God wants you to stand and not waver when you ask and believe because he's God, he has the power to do it. I still ain't got to my text. Here's the reason why many of us can't get an answer from God. Here's why many of us are back in that old shell of tradition and uh, churchism and uh, religion instead of heart-filling, soul-satisfying, mind-pleasing salvation that brings you joy in everything that comes your way. Say amen, somebody. Listen to this. Here's my text. For let not that man or woman let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. James says you ain't going to receive nothing till you get the right mind on. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Mm -mm. Brother, the secret to getting an answer from God in prayer is putting on the right mind and getting right down to business with God and settling the, the fact in your heart that God is able to do what the Word says He can do, that He's able to dry up a cancer, that He's able to heal your body, that He's ready, ready right now to raise you up and to give you the victory. And don't worry about how it's going to be done. Just know that you've asked and God's going to do it. Don't waver back and forth and don't worry about because God is going to come to your rescue. God's going to move for you. Somebody raise your hands and praise the Lord. A double-minded man can't serve God. Some of you wonder why you can't hold on to God. Woo! I'm getting a cold wave. Some of you wonder why you shout on Sunday night and backslid on Monday. Some shout on Sunday night and they make it to Wednesday. It's because you've got an unstable mind. You've got a double mind. Today you're talking faith. Tomorrow you don't even know who God is. You're a million miles away from him because you talk unbelief and you talk fear. But brother, it's time to get on the soul rock and stand in the name of Jesus against the powers and the wiles of the devil. That's power. There's power in having a stand.
unstable mind. What did James say? Oh, I know some of these preachers running around here say, just keep on praying, children. God's going to give you something, honey. He ain't going to do it till you get the right mind. Yeah. James said, let not that man think that he'll get anything of God. He said, you're like a wave of the sea. Toss to and fro. One minute you're over yonder. The next minute you're over yonder. One minute your mind's down at Kroger's. The next minute your mind's on Jesus. The next minute your mind's on the, the beans that are burning in the kitchen. How can you expect to get anything from God when your mind's unstable? But brother, when you lay everything aside and say, I want God in my heart, he's going to move for you and he's going to raise you up to the heights of victory. Bible said a double-minded man or woman is unstable in all his or her ways. Huh? Sunday night, boy, I'm getting ready to preach. Sunday night, you can't hardly wait to get home to get in the bed. So you can get up Monday morning and go visit the hospitals and visit the sick. But Monday morning when you get up, that long tongue, slew foot, huff and puff, lying, rotten, dirty, scheming, no good for nothing devil, is a standing right there by your bedside to punch you right in the nose and to stop you and to tell you that you made a fool out of yourself last night. God ain't going to move for you if you go to the hospital. God ain't going to do anything for you. And the next thing you know, the phone rings and Sister Susie says, Mary, are you going to the hospital this morning? She'll say, no, I don't feel like it'll do much good to go. I just don't feel much of God this morning. An unstable man is unstable in all of his ways. Say amen, somebody. We need that mind that is positive. If I had gone by my feelings, I'd have been sitting at Barney backslid. I didn't feel like coming here tonight because all day long I've carried a load for somebody. And I don't mind to tell you I've wooled it all day and I'm tired. Just let me have the day off today, Lord. He won't let me have one off. We got him on the run. Let not that man think that he'll receive anything from God. When you need a sickness, to be healed, a financial burden to be solved. They have one way to solve it and get it healed, and that's to talk positive faith with every breath you take. Amen, Brother West. Hallelujah. With his stripes I'm healed. My God will supply all your needs by his riches and glory. And as you talk that, you're building up faith. Hallelujah. You're building up that defense in the Holy Ghost. It testifies and bears witness of Jesus. But brother, you go down the road and say, I'm healed. And then when the pain hits you, you say, well, I don't guess I am healed. You're unstable. You got a double mind. You need to get rid of that old doubt mind and get your mind on Jesus. Say amen, somebody. It's your Please raise your hands and praise the Lord. Now, I'm not saying this to be hateful. I know you said, Brother West, you're setting me on fire. I hope I burn the seed up you're sitting on. I'll leave town in just three or four days. Some of you can't even make it to church. I can leave town in seven or eight days. Here you are. Can't go on no farther. And I 
I've preached more to you than any preacher that's ever preached in honey. And I have preached you the truth. And I've preached you messages that ought to put the devil to, to, to skadoos in your life. Because there's power in the Word of God. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Old Samson was double-minded. He was so double-minded, he got more trouble, brother, he could get out of. He went right down in town, went in the house of a harlot, and slept with her. Operator, connect me back up. He was God's man. He was called of God. He was ordained of God. And he got down young in the house of a harlot where he shouldn't have been. He'd come out of the house of that harlot and the Philistine said, We got you now, boy. They walked all of the gates and they was waiting on this great man of God to come out of that harlot's house. He came down to the gates of that city which was steel, weighed thousands of pounds. He walked up to those gates and saw that they were shut and locked and chained. And no doubt the soldiers began to say, we got you, Samson. God will let you go for a while to teach you what's right and what's wrong. That's why you shout so much when you first get saved. And then after three or four months, you have to press for that shout. And that's why some of you feel backslid because you ain't got enough gumption to press into the anointing of God. You think the preacher's going to come up and lay hands on you, you just shout a little bit, you don't jump all over the place, and you expect that everyone to come through to do you that way, and, and many times it don't work that way. The Bible said the law and the prophets were under John, but he said since then the kingdom of heaven is preached, and every man presseth his way into it. Do you want a blessing from God? Press on by that unbelief. Press on through that doubt and discouragement, and get your blessing from God. Somebody say amen. Raise your hands toward heaven and shout Jesus tonight. Paul never got by the pressing. Paul said, I press toward that mark. Oh yeah, when I go to do good, he said evil's present. But I keep on pressing. Ha! Woo! When I think I'm standing, I got to take heed lest I fall. But he said, I got to keep on pressing. He said, when I think I know something, I don't know anything. So I just keep on pressing. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody raise your hand and shout Jesus. Raise your hand and shout Jesus, somebody. You're not shouting. Raise your hand and shout Jesus. I want them to know what we're doing over here. They got a saddle on a bronco over yonder, and that devil tried to put a saddle on some of you all. We're going to break him off. Hallelujah! He's not going to run on our shoulder, brother. We got power over the devil. Say amen, somebody. And you that don't have the power, the ability you should have, there's no excuse after you leave here tonight. Because I'm going to tell you how to get victory. I'm going to tell you how to get the power of God in your life is going to tell you how to get that devil off your shoulder and back under your feet where he belongs. Say amen, somebody. Oh, Samson. Reached right up there. He grabbed them big steel gates. grabbed them doors and tore them gates made out of steel off the hinges. According to some writers, they weighed two or three tons. If that had been us, we'd have just give up. Well, you got me. 
Not Samson, brother. He reached over and got a hold of the handles on them gates. And brother, with one great big lunge, he tore them off the walls. And he carried them over a mile to the top of the mountain. Because he was God's man. And he had power in his life. Say amen. Power the anointed of God. If it had been some of us, we'd have said, God, you're going to have to help me here. But Samson didn't have to. He had his help. And he knew that God. God's power was real. Say amen, somebody. Raise your hands for heaven and praise the Lord for his power. Now let me say this to clear some things up. I'm not justifying Samson for going down there to that heart attack. He shouldn't have done it. He had no right down there. He had no business down there. Oh, it's getting cold in here. He had no business down there. He was in sin. And he committed adultery when he went down there. And he kept on being double-minded to the place that he lost his anointing. Are you listening to me? He kept on till he lost his position with God. Because he'd take the new jawbone of an ass, pick it up in just a little while, kill a thousand Philistines and throw it down and get down the road and wonder why God wouldn't give him a drink of water. That's the way some of us are. Amen. Say amen. amen. We need to be stable in our thinking. Say amen. We need to be stable in, in, in our thoughts, in our heart. Amen. Why? Because James said, let that man not think that he shall receive anything of God. That's what it's all about, my friend. Being able to get down on your knees and saying, God, I need something. And God say, I'm going to give it to you, boy, because you believe me. That's what it's all about. Say amen, somebody. Sure. Her faith, she said, if I can come, that Brother West pray for me. I'll be healed. That's faith. But had I never got to see her again, she'd have come right out of her sickness. Because she believes. Hallelujah. Say that somebody. There's power just believing God. An unstable person, a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. And God doesn't like unstableness at all. Some of you got your foot on the rock and some of you got one foot on the sand and there you stand are you listening to me one day praise God you're on the rock the next day you don't even know if God loves you or not and because of this and I'm not saying this to hurt your feelings I'm making you I, I, by the help of God now this is the Lord because I had something else planned but the whole thing revolves around this in your Christian walk. Can I receive from God? Can I be healed? Can I be delivered? Can I be set free? Woo! Can I have what Peter, James, and John had? Can I get what the little woman at the issue of blood got? Can I get what Bartimaeus got? Can I get what the little man that Jesus spit and rubbed spit of balls in his eyes? Can I get what the man at the pool of Bethesda got? Can I get what the wise men got? Can I get what Mary got? My God, yes you can. If you'll get a mind that's pure, if you'll get the mind of Christ, you can have it. Say amen, somebody. You can have it. But the Bible said to ask in faith. Ask in faith what? Believing. Not wavering. 
but believing. Hallelujah. Not looking and say, well, I guess that is awful hard, ain't it, Lord? No, there's nothing too hard for our God. Why, he can heal a cancer as big as a coffee can, as quick as he can stop your little finger from hurting on your left hand. Because he's God, and because he has the power, and if you'll get a positive mind, you can have your miracle from God. Say amen, somebody. Now, if I'm sounding rather loud to some of you in the front, I can't help it because the ones in the back have to hear. I've got to preach. That's the only way I can do it. So if I get a little loud, I can't help it. I'm loud in air. I'm just about to throw this thing and run. Hallelujah. I feel him all in me. Raise your hands toward heaven and praise the Lord. Power in having a stable mind. Have you ever wondered... Have you ever thought or considered in your own life, why, why can uh, so-and-so pray one little simple prayer and just get everything from God? And I get down and I bawl and I squall and I pray for two hours and I cry and I walk for flowers and I do everything. And I know God ain't going to give it to me. That's why you ain't got it. You get up satisfied about halfway of saying, well, if I don't get it, I had a good prayer. But that's like going down here and working for the steel company. Working every day of the week and then going down on Friday when everybody else is getting the paydays. You say, well, I'm working, but I know I ain't going to get nothing. It's only there, boy, if you go get it. And I guarantee you some of these ladies will sure make sure you get over and get it. That's what I'm kind of doing here. I'm ki kind of nudging you along a little bit to let you know the answer's there. It's on the way. All you've got to do is believe it, reach out, get a hold of it, receive it in your heart. Don't doubt it. Don't waver about it. But believe it and get a stable mind, a mind of faith and a mind of belief, and you'll have a miracle from God. Say amen, somebody. The secret is not wavering. Doubting nothing. She's got a right to shout. God healed her cancer. I'm afraid to turn loose. I'm afraid she'll preach a while. That's how we overcome by our testimony. You know why many of us don't have that that special touch with God? Is because all we talk is negative. Maybe God don't want me to have it. I just come to the conclusion it wasn't His will. You know. I just come to the conclusion maybe I'm just asking the miss, yeah? Because you don't believe one thing you're asking for. But if you start believing, that's how come God the not you to play that piano. That's how come you're so happy. That's how come you're testifying to everybody what God can do. <laughs> Woo! Because if you ask, there's nothing too hard for God. Can you believe that God will do it for you? If he did it for one, he'll do it for another. Say amen, somebody. Say, well, well, I guess it's just grandma's time to go. I guess it's just uncle's time to go. I just guess it's almost over. Honey, you wouldn't convince Hezekiah that. 
So I'm running around out there in the king's court and said, woo he was a good king. But he's going to die. Here's the guy says, shut up! Isaiah done got out in the courtyard and the whole palace was turned upside down to all the pieces. The king was going to die. The king was going to die. And old Hezekiah didn't send down yonder and order a coffin somewhere. No, sir, brother. He run right over there. Praise God. He put his nose right up against the wall and began to call on a God that could heal him, a God that could give him life. And he didn't ask in doubt. He asked in faith believing. And God! gave him life because God can't fail. He got that right mind. Woo! Oh, Isaiah got right out in the courtyard, no doubt. Oh, man. Used to be black, but now it's gray. Hair hanging down there. Old hands wrinkled. Still a prophet of God. Got out in the middle of the courtyard. And all of a sudden, he heard the voice. He said, yes, Lord. He said, Isaiah, go back in the palace. That Hezekiah's done touch me. Woo! Hezekiah never waited a week to get down to thinking about it. Brother, he put his nose right all again the wall. And tears began to go down the wall. And he began to cry to God. And as soon as he was fair with God, God spoke to Isaiah. And said, get back in there and tell him I ain't going to let him die. I'm just going to give him 15 more years to live. If that had been some of us preachers, we'd have still been running down the road saying, you ain't making me no false prophet. But not Isaiah. He loved the king and he loved God. Say amen, somebody. If you're double-minded, you can't get anything from God. Can I preach a while? This ain't rehearsed. The show's over here, huh? I don't know what I'm going to do next. But I do know it's going to be something for God. Amen. If you get the right mind, that old cancer begin to swivel up. That old ulcer will begin to dry up. That old high blood pressure just going to simmer down. That old sugar just go to get normal. Get in the mind of Christ. Glory be to God. Somebody shout Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Hallelujah. There's power in getting the right mind. Say amen, somebody. Old Samson kept playing around there till he lost, lost that, that special touch. And brother... He got brought down to desperation. He got brought down to, to the place of discouragement. He got brought down to the place, the lowest place he'd ever been in his entire life. The next thing you know, old Samson, they had a, a rigging on him like a horse. They had him over yonder in the grinding mill running around and around, grinding corn. He couldn't see what was going on. All he knew, he was walking in a rut. That's where some of you are. You've been in that old church till you dried up and you're in a rut. But you need to get out where the Word of God is being preached and reach out and get a hold of Jesus and he's going to open your eyes and he's going to let you see. Somebody right Raise your hands and praise the Lord for his power. I can see that little boy. I'm just about to blow up. I can see that little old boy. Hallelujah. As he, I can see him as, as he came over and they were taking the rigging off of Samson. Oh, they had him doing the work of a donkey. Why the devil will make a fool out of you. So well, you're a fool. Well, I'm a fool for Christ's sake. 
And they all began to holler for Samson to come and make sport. And his little old mind was tore all to pieces. His little old heart was broken. His eyes were put out. Infection and pus running down his cheeks. They took sharp objects like ice picks and gouged his eyes out. That's what the devil will do for you. Play with him if you want to. Honey, I don't play with him. He gets close to me, I kick him in the teeth. He gets around me, I resist him. Praise God, I put him under my feet. If he gets close to me, I tread upon him. Glory to God, and I march on. And I tell everybody that belongs to Jesus that they have the same power to do the same thing. You may not feel goosebumps when you do it, but that don't matter. I preached last night how goosebumps will let you down. I love to feel them, you know. And I felt them I couldn't stand still. Who was it? Tiny Tim tiptoed through the tubes. I felt them till I, honest to God, I felt like I could walk the back of the pew. Boy, you're crazy. I, I know it. Old Samson, here he comes. His little eyes put out. His mind perturbed. Torn all to peace. He lost his ministry. He lost his anointing. God wasn't talking to him no more. Boy, that, you talk about a bad shape. Whoo! My God, I wouldn't want to live if I couldn't talk to God anymore. I wouldn't want to live if he wouldn't talk to me no more. Woo! I wouldn't want to live if I couldn't feel him anymore. That devil will put your eyes out, mister. Yes, sir. And I'm only preaching this because I love you enough to obey God. I'd have preached what I wanted to if I hadn't. He'll take you and he'll tie you a tr to a tree right out in the middle of the wilderness and let you stay right there till you rot down and die. He'll put your eyes out. He'll make you that you won't even want to live anymore. He'll get you to the abyss. Suicide spirit get a hold of you and you'll try to blow your brains out and lift your eyes in the devil's hell and he'll laugh in your face all the time you're doing it. I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to live. I wouldn't want to live if I couldn't have the Lord. I can make it and J-Boy crippled. But I can't make it in a crippled religion. I'm glad I know he cares. Samson played with God too much. Some of you are backslidden and you're playing with God and you're playing too far down the line. You're playing with fire. And you're going to lose, my friend. Another night in the tabernacle. I guess it was, what, over 400? It was many people there. We got right here. Over 400 people. Before I got in the building, God spoke to me. He said, there's seven people here tonight that, that have to be in this altar. There were more. And he said, there's two that will never hear my voice again after tonight. And I started crying. I said, oh, God. See, I put myself in that person's shoes. I put myself right there in that seat they're sitting in. And boy, I just don't know what I'd do if I never heard his voice again. I just couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand it. Knowing that he was right there all the time waiting in line, waiting for me to get rid of my stubbornness, waiting for me to get rid of my self-pity. Wait for me to get rid of my self-righteousness. Wait for me to get rid of all of my self-made gods and say, Jesus, I need you. I 
I'll tell you what, I'm trying to keep myself, but I just can't hardly hold it. I tell you, it feels like it, it feels like the Ohio River right down there, and they're just trying to come out. It just feels like a river of water. How I many know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Raise your hands toward heaven and praise the Lord. Here come this, here come this great man of God, this ex-Christian, this backslider. He sent a little boy to get him, and here he came, leading him by the hand, blind as a bat, unstable. Every time God put a greater anointing in Samson's life, Samson go get him a woman, get drunk. Then he'd go home with that harlot and sleep with her all night long. Then the next day he wanted God back. The next thing you know, the devil put his eyes out. It don't work, brother. God may let you go for a while. He's a merciful God. But after a while, he says, it's enough. It's enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. And James sealed it when he said, let that man not think that he'll receive anything from God. An unbelievable mind, a mind that's unbelieving, un unfaithful. A double-minded man is unstable right. in all his ways. And God loves you. God wants you to be free. Most of you have tied your own hands if you're bound. Brother Weston... Have you got so much to say after I'm gone? You love me while I'm here. Now I know there's most of you love me when I'm gone. But unstableness in one thing points to unstableness in everything. And a double-minded person. Here comes Samson. Tears and infection running down his jaw. Scars on his little wrist. He couldn't see them. And on his feet were the rigging and the yoke they had him in. Had rubbed blisters and sores on his body. If that's what you want, go to it. But when you get in trouble, you're going to have to have God, just like Samson did. Let me preach a while. Every time Samson got into sin and filth, he'd always come back and say, I'll go out like I've always done, and I'll get right. And I'll destroy the devil. But it didn't work. This time, he was gone. He couldn't get out of this one. And that's where Satan's wanting you to go. He's wanting to maneuver you into that place that you can't get free. I'm preaching a message. I think it's maybe over with. I don't know. But behold, the axe is laid to the root of the tree. When I preached that, it was to a crowd of people something like this. And I've never seen so many people get free in one of our services. The devil's going to cut you down if you don't watch out. He'll cut you down with sin. He'll cut you down with filthiness. He'll cut you down with everything he can. But, brother, it's not him that you've got to be afraid of. His axe don't hurt. Like God's acts. Listen to me, neighbor. The Bible says that that sword of the Spirit, that thing is sharper than any two as it's sword. And when God cuts you down, that's it. And honey, God don't cut down at the top of the ground. He cuts you at the roots. Double-mindedness. 
double-minded people can't stay saved. They want to go to church, but they still want to look at the girls. The wife's not there. They want to go to church, but they still want to tell the jokes on Monday morning. The wife ain't there. The pastor's not there. Even quieter in here. Double-mindedness, my friend, you'll be a loser in the end. Oh, my God. Speak out of me, Holy Ghost. Samson got in a place that he couldn't get out. Some of you are there right now. You can't get out. I'm going to help you. I'm preaching, for, I'm preaching for a lot of souls tonight. Some of you have been Christian a long time. You can't give up now. Some of you have been going to church for a long time. You can't throw your hands up. You can't throw it all down now. We're too close home. We're too close home now. Old Samson, that great, big, strong, mighty hand was being held by that little tender hand of that lad. Listen to me, my friend. I love you so much. Oh, I love you so much. Samson stopped and he said, uh, Could you just let me feel the great pillars of this building? That little lad said, well, it can't be too much, you know. I thought, no doubt in his heart, it can't be too much to ask. And he took him over and let him put them big old hands upon the pillars of that building. But honey, he was reaching for the pillars of eternity. He was reaching for one that, that held it all, upholding all things by the word of his power. God's power is real. Samson had had a mind that was torn all to pieces. His heart was broken. His body was sick. His eyes were put out. But when he put his hands on that pillar of that building, he knew that that's what was holding those thousands of people that were screaming, Send Samson out. We want to look at that ex-champion. We want to see that ex-Christian. And don't never think that Satan ain't got a welcoming party for you that are backslid and lost. Honey, you'll be ushered right into the deepest part of hell with people laughing in your teeth, <laughs> gritting their teeth in your ears, biting you where the worm dies not and the fire is never quenched. Is it worth it? Samson said, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. Lust is not worth it. Stealing, lying, all lies. All lies. <laughs> oh, liars will have their place in the lake of fire. and put his hands on the pillow of that building and his blinded eyes dripping with infection and tears as he turned his trembling voice toward heaven. The champion of Israel had come to the end. Greatest man was the man in this building equal to Samson in strength. Oh, he was a man, but he was a foolish man. Samson almost died like a fool. But he said, I'd rather die for God than to die a fool for the devil. Yes. The 
Samson put his hand on the pillars of that building. He said, Lord, remember me just this one time. Avenge me. Look what they've done to my eyes, Lord. They've put my eyes out. Now, when he got that heart right, listen to me, and he got that mind centered on heaven, God, no doubt the angels standing around and told you, get back out of the way. Samson's calling. Right down through the Milky Way come the anointing of God right down upon that man as he gave that one big lunge. God remembered him. And the building came crashing down and the gallant man called Samson died among the thieves and the robbers. But he died satisfied that he'd found God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It's not so bad to die. But brother, if you've got God in your life, you can kind of not worry about it. It's not so bad to go through the shadows of death. If Jesus is with you, say amen, somebody. Raise your hands to heaven and praise the Lord for his power. Who knows, this might be the next deliverer for Huntington. Yeah. But I wonder how many would hear. Thank you, honey. A double-minded man is unstable. It's pitiful to be unstable. Why, Brother West? because Jesus didn't build an unstable church. And in his church, there is no unstable pillars. There are no second-class blocks. There are no second-class nails. There are no second-class stones in his building. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail, overcome, take authority over my church. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the powers of the enemy. I give you power over all the powers of the enemy. Jesus said, what are you going to do with this? Back off in the corner? No. Say I'm losing? No. Throw my hands up and grit? No. Backslide? No. I'm going on, brother. I got the devil under my feet. I got the victory of my life. I'm a winner in Jesus Christ. Paul told Timothy, he said, boy, he said, nevertheless, settle all controversy. The foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Let every man that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The Bible says our sins and our iniquities have separated us from our God. Right. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. We're on our way out, friend. Yes, we are. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid.
God wants you to find the mind of Christ. Ask for his blessing. If you lack wisdom, ask of God who giveth to all liberally and upbraideth not. The first thing you have to know, I'm a Christian. If I'm a Christian, then I'm worthy to be healed. If I'm a Christian, then I'm worthy to be blessed. No one is any more loved than I am. Nobody rates with God any better than I do. Nobody's got any greater position in heaven than I have. I'm a son. I'm a daughter of God. Some of you are backsliders. Some of you are away from God. I'm begging you, please, please turn around. God's calling. God don't want you to go to hell. It's eternal life or death. It's God or the devil. It's heaven or hell. It's sickness or being well. God's going to move for you tonight that have come for deliverance. I'm cutting the message real short. I can't even see an end to it. How come Samson to win he got a positive mind how come David to win on the mountain he had a positive mind how come Abraham a hundred years old Sarah 90 years old how in the world could they ever be a daddy and a mommy they had a positive mind my friend be single-minded. God will do it for you because He loves you. If you can't see the way, the way's there in hell. If you can't feel God, He's there in hell. Don't let anything from this night forward, don't let anything that's of the negative side come out of your mouth. Nothing but positive faith, reaction of a present God. Glory to God. You can have what the Bible says you can have. Say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. Be there, rest you. Be there, rest you. Will your land 